Okay, so sorry I was going to do this a few days ago, guys, but TNA Sacrifice was a few days ago, and um, it was actually one of the best pay-per-views TNA has produced in a very long time. Recommend um, watching it, if you can catch the replay if you can, before Impact tonight, but it was a very good pay-per-view Hell, like, it will probably blow over the limit, just out of proportion, because WWE pay-per-views have been shady recently, and, um, TNA is really stepping the bar up. I was going to go for the results, you know, see if my predictions were right, Some, most of them were, some of them weren't. Let's go from the bottom of the card to the top of the card like last time. Now, I don't really think I had a prediction for this, so it didn't really matter, but this was a good match. Even though I missed some, some of it, it was a good match. The Motor City Machine Guns defeated Beer Money and Team 3D to become the number of contenders for the tag team titles. I didn't really get to see the finish, so guess the replay on that one. The Freak Rob Terry. Which I got right, defended his global championship against Orlando Jordan by using his Freak Buster. Which is actually a pretty good move. Name for a move. Now, I actually surprisingly got this right. Douglas Williams beat the Kaz to once again become. This is, this is what I like to use here the undisputed X Division champion. So there's now no dispute. Doug Williams continues his first technical first reign as X Division champion because he never, because in my mind, he never lost the belt. It was out of his proportion, out of his uh, power to get to lockdown because of the thing in Ice Iceland, the um, volcano that erupted a few months ago. So that was not his fault. So he is, this is technically his still his first reign as X Division Champion. Now, I got this one wrong, but I'm, in a way, it, I saw it was going to happen anyway. Madison Rain successfully defended her Knockouts Championship against Tara. As a result, Tara's wrestling career in TNA is over. She'll probably, re I don't know if she'll retire. Some people are tell saying she'll go back to WWE, which I don't think why she would go back, because they treat her like a fucking jobber at the end of her long WWE run. They treat her like a fucking jobber to the New Divas, which is retarded. Tara has a lot of talent, and hopefully this isn't the end for her. If it is, thank you, Tara. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Lisa. Her real name is Lisa, if you didn't know that. Thank you, Lisa. <clears throat> I got this one right, too. <laughs> I'm just looking over my predictions and from what happened here. The band successfully defended their TNA Tag Team titles as predicted against Ink Ink. And I'm not going to lie, Ink Ink had put up a good fight, but they, it wasn't their night. It wasn't their night, just like Kevin Nash said. Now, the thing is, Freebird rules. For those who don't know, you probably saw Kevin Nash mention that. If you don't remember what that is, basically go back to the Spirit Squad days of maybe 2005 when they had the World Tag Team titles. But I'll explain the Freebird rules for people who don't know. Basically, from probably many, many years ago, Wrestling's Glory Days... The Fabulous Freebirds, because this is a Michael Hayes, P.S. Hayes, um, Terry Gordy, and I think Bobby Eaton. When they won the tag team titles, it meant, since they were a stable of three men or more, any member of that st any two members of that stable could defend the tag team titles, which you probably saw on the Spirit Squad a few years ago. Basically, any of those five... Of the spirits or could defend the five. <laughs> sorry, there could defend the tag team titles. Now, what does this mean? I think I mentioned this earlier. I thought the beautiful people would do the free bird rules, but I guess not, since Lacey 
and Velvet has the tag titles, and, and Madison has to deal with the um, knockout spell. So I guess they're not going to do the Freebird rules. Whoa! So, as I was saying, I don't think that the beautiful people will do the Freebird rules. But we will finally see the Freebird rules back in act. The Freebird rules back in professional wrestling, as the band will use them pretty much a lot. It's gonna be great. So yeah, the band retained. Like I said, Abyss defeated Desmond Wolf with the Black Hole Slam, and is now have does now have Chelsea. For 30 days, and it's going to be awesome to see what they do with this. Now, this match was actually pretty decent. Mr. Anderson versus Jeff Hardy, who are surprisingly two of the top three people in the um, contenders poll they have on TNA Wrestling right, right now. They've had it for a few weeks, but they are the top three, two of the top three contenders. Right now, on that poll. So vote, vote, vote until Impact comes on. Because Jeff Hardy's basically going to be the number one contender if you don't vote. And it's going to be awesome. So anyway, Jeff Hardy pulled the win off Mr. Anderson with the Swanton Bomb. After well, Afterwards, though, which I thought was pretty interesting. Mr. Anderson, in a class act, put his hand out for Jeff Hardy to shake it. Jeff Hardy does not take the handshake. He walks away, which is pretty okay, to be honest, for them. And, uh, now this was interesting because Sting assaulted Jeff Jarrett before the match even happened. And, um, basically Sting had the match won from that assault. So when they pulled, he pulled the Jeff Jarrett in the ring, bell rang. Sting hit the Scorpion Death Drop, and it's over. One, two, three. Sting won the match. Now, Jeff Jarrett. Um, if you saw it on the pay-per-view, which is pretty awesome, they popped his shoulder back into place. I don't know if that was an act or that was supposed to happen, but that was awesome. They popped it in the, so we wished, we actually, I actually do wish the best for Jeff Jarrett, but that was pretty awesome what they did. <laughs> now, in the main event, this was awesome. Rob Van Dam versus AJ Styles for the heavyweights. Champions of the world, excuse me right there. Now, two things that I really liked in this match. One, Flair, Flair ejected, and Earl Hebner fights back on Ric Flair. It, it is great wrestling. It is great history that, you know, Earl Hebner, screwjob guy, he does the right thing. And he pushes them, he pushes Ric Flair, he just fights Ric Flair. It was awesome. People were in the chat room were going crazy when this happened. So, mm, most of the fans were going crazy too. But, then Flair goes on commentary. And it's great because you do, because Ric Flair, have Ric Flair on commentary. That saves the match. If the match was going to fail, that saves the match itself. But the match did not fail. That only made the match better. Ric Flair on commentary. That was genius on Teenage part. It was hilarious, too. And, um... Jay Lethal, of all people, Jay Lethal interferes and when Ric Flair goes back... Okay, Ric Flair goes back out to help Edgy, and, um... Jay Lethal comes out and attacks Ric Flair. This is genius on Teenage part because it gives them something to work on. Anyway, AJ Styles loses... Robin Dam is the five star frog splash. He retains the title. And we will see who the top ten contenders on TNA will be for impact. Because the voting is pretty much one sided for Jeff Hardy to be number one contender. But this also means that well, you know, last place is actually a tie right now. This is how big it is. Oh, I don't remember who it is who's last top ten contenders, but it's a tie basically. It's pretty close, so, um, yeah, we did this in 10 minutes, with minus the camera drop there. <laughs> so this was your TNA, uh, sacrifice. Oh, I'm still tired, sorry. This is your TNA sacrifice review.
see ya.